So we're here today and we are going to talk to you about something <laughs> that just pops into my head after an experience I had about why Christians don't help people. You hear that all the time. <laughs> um, these assumptions about what we're doing and what we believe, but we don't really help people and we don't really do that. And I discredit that a lot, but I had an experience in the park <laughs> the other day <laughs> and I realized there may be some merit to that. And not because someone didn't help me, I didn't help somebody. <laughs> she telling on herself. Guilty. <laughs> so if you wanna hear about when I failed, <laughs> Uh, stay tuned and keep listening and, and, and learn about how I made it right. Hey, it's Kanisha and this is not our first video, but if this is your first time tuning in, um, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am a wife and a mom of four. And I like to sit down with this girl right here and talk about things that we go through so that we can maybe help encourage or make you laugh or I don't know, just to make some type of difference, you know. That's what we all wanna do. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Sylvia and yes, we like to get together and talk about our life experiences and things that are relevant to us according to work, family, and faith. So join, uh, mm -mm. I was rolling until I got yeah. to the door. Right now, we're in the, not the, I don't even know what stage of the pandemic. Right we just in it. We in it. I don't see. When did it begin? <sighs> it seems like it's been all my life. <laughs> all my life I had a fight, the <laughs> coronavirus. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we've been going in this for a long time, and I personally um, am really starting to get some fatigue, <laughs> some burnout. <laughs> I'm tired. I'm cranky. I am restless and um, you know it's just hard because it seems like there's no end in sight yeah and then all your responsibilities are still ongoing so I had some appointments downtown and had to drop a family member off for another appointment but I also at the work right so I drop them off at their appointment and I go to we have a really nice waterfront park nice. um, and I used to exercise, right? Walk across the walking bridge. But fatigue has gotten the best of me. So this time I just sat down. <laughs> and I'm sitting, but I'm working. Got my email, I'm answering questions, and I'm trying to get things done so that um, when I do get back to my either home office or work office, I am not behind. And I am just reading the emails, and even those are just draining me, right? <laughs> And I happen to glance up. I see a woman pushing the stroller. She's got some kids. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. And she smiles. You know, she's like, whatever. So um, she's walking, pushing the stroller. I guess she's like me, right? Trying to get some air. And I go back to my email. Well, shortly after, I hear, you know, a little crying. I'm like, oh, it's the baby. Um, you know, who doesn't love a baby? They're cute. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, they're babies. And so she's pushing the stroller. And I have... A whole like it's, you know it's like the 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 bench swing mm -hmm. and then it's like a whole row I'll try to insert a picture because I have one <laughs> and she goes to the bench swing next to me and she's kind of like sorry um, and I noticed that she's Spanish speaking and I can hear her accent and I'm like oh it's okay you know I got lots of people in my family I'm used to noise and babies this is not disturbing me at all well a while later something clicks in my head and I hear that the crying has like escalated and doubled <laughs> and I'm like oh she must got two babies <laughs> and the crying goes from you know like the wow I have a baby to like some screeching it ain't cute it, it ain't, ain't cute, cute no <laughs> it ain't cute it gets real and I'm like well they must be hungry <laughs> and I hear um the mom she she originally is like speaking to them in Spanish and like trying to soothe and I kind of glance over and she's like picked up one and she's digging in a bag and I went on back to what I was doing and it continues on and I tune it out. But then I hear it's like it went up another level <laughs> and I hear, hey, please. <laughs> and I'm thinking, wow, they must really be getting to her. <laughs> she didn't switch to English, right? <laughs> and I, yeah, she changed her whole language. <laughs> and I look up 
and I see baby one is in the crib screaming <laughs> stroller yes stroller baby one is in the stroller screaming okay baby two is in her arms screaming <laughs> when he's satisfied with being in the arms no and mama is screaming at me <laughs> I was like oh you said hey to me <laughs> and she's like trying to offer me and I jump up and she's like would you and I took the baby and I just thought oh well shoot <laughs> you know I didn't think about that and so um, I take this little baby boy super cute it was just so cute. He, he wasn't was screaming when he got to you. No, he was hollering. <laughs> I look at her and I think, oh, wait a minute. It's a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> All of that took place. <laughs> All that. And it occurs to me, wait a minute. <laughs> it's coronavirus out here. She ain't got on no mask. I don't have no mask. These two babies definitely ain't wearing a mask. That's yes, dangerous. Don't put masks on your babies. Right. So, and we're and she and I were probably as close as Kanisha and I are because I also didn't want to alert her, you know, and make her concerned. I didn't want her to think I was going to do something, you know, run off with the baby. So I was staying close to her, and I thought, wait a minute, it's a pandemic. <laughs> and then I started. Then my mind started working. Then you have somewhere to be. You're supposed to be doing your work emails. You got to go pick your family member up. Uh, you need to walk all the way back across the park to your car. Like all of the things started rolling through my mind while this baby is chugging the bottle and she is tilting her head back to exhale. And my impulse is, you can't do this right now. You have to take your baby back. That's what I, for a minute, yeah, that's what the thought was. And then in that same instant, it was like this peace settled over me. And it was like saying that where you are and what is happening right now is exactly as it's supposed to be. And I just had to stop and think on that for a minute. It made me think about, the sun we just had a Sunday school lesson, uh, Sunday before last, mm -hmm. on the Good Samaritan. Yeah. And it made me think about that. Um, and me, and whether or not, and I actually did the Sunday school review, right? <laughs> and whether or not I was a good neighbor. And I had to think about it. And I, I always think that I am, right? That time you were. Sort of. <laughs> not initially. <laughs> so in the, in the lesson, you know, Jesus, in the Good Samaritan, Jesus talks about, um, who is the neighbor, right? And so he's asked these questions by someone who is uh, knowledgeable on Jewish law. You know, how do I get eternal life? And when when he tells him, you know, well, what does, how is it written? What does the law say? You know, and he talks about love and honor the Lord your God with all your heart and all your might and all your soul, and then love your neighbor as yourself. And he's like, well, yeah, do that. <laughs> and then the uh, person says, but well, who is my neighbor? So Jesus tells him the parable on the Good Samaritan. So you have a certain person who is attacked and left for dead. And first, um, a priest passed by, sees him and continues on. Then a Levite sees him and continues on. And then the Samaritan comes, right? And so it really touched me in that moment where I was because I had in my mind passed her by so I heard the screaming I heard the crying but I tuned her out right thinking I was doing the right thing and that's one thing that I realized when I was studying the Sunday school lesson is the priest and the Levite Jesus doesn't tell you why they passed him. Mm -hmm. so um, understanding the law as it was written you can think of reasons why they may have passed him but we really don't know why they did not stop to help. We don't know if they just didn't care. We don't know if they were trying to observe the law and not touch anything unclean. We don't know if they were pressed for time. We don't know. No. But here we are now looking at it, trying to determine what was the thing to do. And it was the person who stopped on their way and did everything that needed to be done to help them. And that's who the neighbor was. Well, let's fast forward to me and Sister Girl in the Park, right? It's 
noteworthy that the Samaritan was the unlikely person to help. That's actually a good point because the woman in the park didn't speak the same language as me, right? It's unlikely. It was unlikely. She and I were not going to have a conversation <laughs> that day. Um, she spoke Spanish, I spoke English, and she did have some English, um, and I have minimal Spanish knowledge, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> she was in need, and no, she wasn't beaten and broken and left for dead, but she was overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. She needed help. Now, me, I thought I was being nice. I think, you know, I love Jesus. I'm saved. And I'm kind to people. And I said this to someone the other day, and I don't know that I'm a neglectful person, but I'm not always attentive. So, I thought that I was doing the right thing by smiling and nodding and not making looking, her feel uncomfortable. Not making her feel uncomfortable. Like I was doing her a favor. <laughs> right? I'm the good lady in the park who didn't look at her crazy when her baby started crying. <laughs> but something else to consider is we as believers are polite to people in need, but do we help them? Mm -hmm. Right? And so I had decided that I wasn't going to look at her, but she needed to be looked at. <laughs> <laughs> she she needed me to pay not necessarily that she needed me to examine her but she needed me to see her she needed me to see that she needed help and I had decided that I was going to do what I thought was right and not pay attention and so I think about all the times that I needed help but no one saw me you know, I was struggling and no one saw it. I was um, overwhelmed and nobody saw it. Mm -hmm. I was sick, nobody saw it. You know, how many times have you needed help and there were people everywhere, but nobody saw you? And I was so thankful that she had the mind to say something. <laughs> and you know what? And that speaks to on the other side of this, how when you are that person that is in need, mm -hmm. how Sometimes you do have to cry out. Yes. Because people will try to help you the way they think mm -hmm. you want to be helped or you should be helped and it's not what you need. Right. Like in the park where you thought ignoring her was the thing that she needed, but it took for her to cry out. Yes. Because I thought I understood what was the right thing to do. It's just this how we do. We get in the elevator. We don't make eye contact look down straight ahead or you know you just smile and nod you just have social niceties but you don't really interact and connect with the person and so I thought that I was doing the socially acceptable thing and really when she was <laughs> I wish y'all could have seen her face <laughs> when I turned around she had this screaming baby right here and she was like <laughs> like I know you hear me <laughs> and he's cute you don't hear me you heard this baby yes <laughs> And um, I was amazed at my ability to tune things out. <laughs> so apparently so was she. <laughs> but she needed help and she wanted me to see. And there are so many people around us that are just waiting for us to see them. Waiting for us to see their struggle. And the reality is, again, I'm glad that she cried out because it was a valuable lesson for me and it was... Um, helpful for her but the reality is there was lots of screaming going on <laughs> before she she yelled over it right why did I ignore her why did I turn my face away to to somebody's to to somebody's screaming at the top of their lungs <laughs> three when you include her three when I <laughs> talk for the third one to come <laughs> yes. and you know what what is it about us that makes us do that Um, all the things that I do with my time that I believe are worthwhile, some of them are, but some of them are distractions. That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> there are so many distractions. There's so much stuff pulling at us, telling us, you know, that this is important. Mm -hmm. That sometimes the thing that truly is important gets looked over. It does. And the lady and the crying babies was truly important. Not that everything else on the list wasn't important because right. those things were too. But just like everybody who passed by the man, 
you know, there's a good excuse, good reasoning for, mm -hmm. but it's at the expense of someone else. Are we being neighbors? And that, you know, take it a step further, am I a neighbor? <laughs> you know, because I walked out of that Sunday school review like, got this. <laughs> two weeks later. It wasn't two weeks, it was that Wednesday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't even two weeks, that week. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got this. I like this. It's one of my favorite parables. I got this, Jesus. And, you know, three days later, I'm in the park not being a neighbor. <laughs> but you know what? The Word just told us that the Lord is paying attention to us, and the Lord gave you an opportunity. Yes. I'm glad he was listening to her cry. <laughs> and, he, and he must have told her to cry a little loud, honey. She's not paying attention. <laughs> I'm glad he heard her. <laughs> Because she would have walked away. I mean, and that's what happens with people and believers. And that's how people look at us. She would have walked away like that woman. She seen me over she here. She saw me. <laughs> <laughs> she just ignored me. She would have been hurt. She would have been even more frustrated. You know, she would have been disappointed, whatever. And what if she had seen me on YouTube talking about Jesus and they love you and da 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 She'd be like, that's the lady that didn't help me in the park. <laughs> It's not funny. But that's what happened. That is so <laughs> true. We as believers, I don't think, I think a lot of people are like me. I don't think we're out there trying to ignore people and not trying to help people. We believe that we have applied our time and our focus to worthwhile endeavors. It made perfect sense for me to be answering my work emails. Those people needed a response. It made perfect sense for me to be prioritizing my calendar and going through my day. But when someone cries out for help, what do we do? Do we hear them? Have we paid attention? Are we turned towards them? Have we put our eyes on them? Do we hear their cry or have we turned away? In that situation, um, I had that confirmation when the Lord spoke to me because I'm looking at her and I'm thinking the list is coming in and I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> I got to do this and I got to do that and I need to get to my car and I got to drive back over here and I got to, and he just calmed all of that and said, no, this is where you're supposed to be right now because I had to learn that lesson. I have gotten so focused on the to-do list that I don't um, follow after what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> The Lord had to show me in the park that day um, that I got it wrong. And I'm thankful that he gave me the opportunity to get it right. But just like the priest and the Levite, I was probably content to walk on by. Like if I had finished what I was doing, I would have got up and left. And went on about my day while she was still juggling two babies, a diaper bag, a double stroller, and some formula. <laughs> And crying for somebody to help her. And crying for somebody else to help her. And I would have gotten up and walked on my way. And so, I, it, it's just interesting how God takes very quickly what you think you know and lets you know you don't know it yet.